Good morning, brothers and sisters. This is Brother Joe. So glad you joined me for Wednesday Bible study. Before we get into the Lord's Word of God today, I'd like to say a quick prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I humbly come before your throne. I pray that all the people that you have drawn to see this message, that you open their eyes, ears, heart, mind, and soul to your word and understanding. I pray this in the precious name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen, brothers and sisters. Sometimes you may hear me say Yeshua. That's how you say Jesus in Hebrew. So if you brought your Bibles today, please turn to the book of Joshua, chapter 5. And we'll start reading verse 13. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, a man stood opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? And he said, No, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshipped and said to him, What does my Lord say to his servant? And then the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, Take your sandals off your foot, for the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. And so now, this is the commander of the Lord's army. And Joshua knows who this is. He discovers he is, God has revealed to him that this is the Lord himself. And so he bows his head to the ground and worships him. And the Lord doesn't tell him, get up, worship God only, because it's God himself. If we drop down two more verses in chapter 6, verse 2, it reads, And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho unto your hand, its king's and the mighty men of valor. So it's the Lord himself. We know the word of God says, when Moses wants to see the face of the Father, God Almighty, he tells him, no one can see my face and live. So this is Jesus, Yeshua, before he comes incarnated in human form to die on a cross for you and me. Remember, the Word was made flesh, and the Word dwelled among us. And the Word was here from the beginning, and everything was created through Him, for Him, and by Him. Amen? Amen. So that's a powerful passage to see our Lord, Jesus, come as the commander of the Lord's army. Amen? Amen. So now, turn with me to the book of John, chapter 21. We'll start reading in verse 15. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, feed my lambs. And he said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And he said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, Tend to my sheep. And he said to him a third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And Peter was grieved because he said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Most assuredly, I say to you, When you were younger, you girded yourself and walked where you wished. 
But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands. Another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. This he spoke, signifying by what death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, follow me. So you see, we all have to love our Lord with the utmost love possible. This is why he asked him three times. There's three kinds of love. The first is your brotherly love. The second kind of love is for your family, your family love. And the third is the greatest love of all. It's a agape love. And that's why he asked him three times. And he had agape love. And we know through old writings like Josephus and others that Peter goes to his death. He is crucified. And he's crucified upside down because he tells them, I am not worthy to die in the same way that Jesus did. That's powerful. But that's a cross that he had to bear. And brothers and sisters, we all have a cross that we have to bear. And it's all different. But whatever it is, we have to accept it. We have to love our Lord and Savior with agape love. Now, brothers and sisters, turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 10. And we'll read verse 37 and 38. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. So you see, brothers and sisters, to have agape love is to love your Lord, your God, with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And to love him more than your, your human father, your mother, your daughter, your son. You must love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, with agape love. And then take up the cross and follow him. And never put the cross down. Keep following that upward call, having your mind as the mind of Jesus, and that is to please God and do his will. And if you're not doing God's will, you're not pleasing God. So have your mind on the Lord and please him and do his will. Amen? Amen. So one last verse. Follow me over to the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. Amen? Amen. So brothers and sisters, ask the Lord every morning for more love in your heart. More love for your Lord and Savior, Jesus, agape love. Amen? Amen.